dependent comparisons in some sense, but um, it actually, actually turns out to be a pretty good, uh, pretty good rule of thumb and, and does very well, and it's certainly just, uh, justifiable. Um, you can also, if you're interested for whatever reason, look at the uh, breakdown of, of how many voxels there are um, with, uh, with at least two, with at least three, with at least four lesions, et cetera. Um, yeah, well, you know, I, I had a discussion with Rorden about this, and we, we talked about it back and forth, and we couldn't come up with um, a really good argument either way. And in VBT map right now, you can, actually, uh, you can actually have it carried out either way. There's this flag called no dupe um, that will remove duplicate copies of, of, each, you know, of each voxel. So I... I've thought about it, and I, I, I haven't convinced myself that it's completely correct to do that because there's something about the sort of uh, um, degree of representation of each voxel that, that feels important. But at the same time, I, I really it doesn't make sense to treat them as separate comparisons for one analysis and not for another. So I think in most cases, probably the no dupe flag is correct, and, and I don't want to make it the, the default because I don't want to change the behavior of the program. But that's that's certainly viable. Um, however, pretty much everybody who uses Right now, he uses Voxpo or uh, or or um, MRI cron is uh, is counting all the comparisons separately, for better or for worse. It's neither. It's it's. Yeah, it, it's it's neither more conservative nor more liberal. Um, it, it 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 hinges on um, on whether the uh, duplicate voxels uh, tend to be good for you or bad for you. I really thought it was going to turn out to um, to make analyses more liberal. Because um, because I felt there would be large areas of duplicate voxels towards the towards the fringes, um, where you know one su only one subject had coverage, um, but in in cases I've tried it hasn't proved to be the case. Um, it seems to go e go either way, um, but I can't pretend that I've I've looked at it really thoroughly. Um, so before we forget, um, so VB mask info I think also gave us this warning about non-zero one values. And before we forget to deal with that, it's probably a good idea, even though it doesn't necessarily make a case in this case, to uh, use VBIM to undo that. So we're grabbing the lesion file. We're quantizing everything to one, which means that all non-zero values to one. And we're writing it back out as the same file. OK. So now if we run, run VB mask info on that again, we don't get the warning. Um, so the next thing we can do with this number 723 is run VBT calc. Um, VBT calc lets you calculate t thresholds, and actually, actually VBT calc is also embedded in VB view. So let me just do it there. Um, so when you select the stat layer, you can click this calculate button, which gives you a little calculator for um, for calculating uh, um, thresholds. As you can see, a lot of the values here are filled in with nonsense. That's a bug. Um, but I'm not going to worry about it so much because most of those bugs only uh, affect um, um, only affect the RFT stuff. So I'm not going to worry about the smoothness. But we do need to uh, worry about the uh, degrees of freedom, and I'm going to set it to uh, uh, what were there? 24? Set it to 22. Okay. So our bond for any corrected threshold is going to be. Um, uh, 4.6. Um, so this step is unfortunately a little manual. You have to you have to sort of figure out the effective degrees of freedom for your for your for your um, for your data set. Um, we're hoping to automate that a little better right now. But right now VBView doesn't know that you carried out a VLSM. It just knows that you've overlaid a stat map. So our bond for any threshold is 4.6. Um, we know we're going to exceed that somewhere because we looked at the we look, we know the max value is somewhere around eight. But let's just set the threshold to 4.6. Hit enter, and as you can see, we still have some values somewhere. So this is great, and we should definitely publish this. <laughs> um, I should mention that Voxpo does have a bunch of tools for generating uh, random and nonsense data um, for, use, for use in this kind of testing. Um, I'm not going to talk about them in detail, but if, if anybody needs to do that, um, that's doable. Um, Right, so that's that's bond for any correction for the number of independent comparisons. Let's look at the permutation test. Uh, I'm not going to get into the, the the details of the syntax here um, too carefully, but there's there's a little script called make VLSM, 
that actually it's, a, it's basically a wrapper for v, VBT map, but it takes many of the same arguments. Um, but among other things, it lets you carry out a, a permutation test. Whoops. Um, so I'm going to grab this whole command line. I'm telling it to do 40 permutations because you guys are waiting for me, and I don't want to keep you waiting. Um, it's going to cleverly take advantage of, uh, whoops, I told it four CPUs, even though this laptop only has two. That's okay. It'll still, it'll still get done. I'm going to have a quick drink of water. So gener generating those TMAPs only takes a second or two, so uh, generating four TMAPs on two processors really doesn't take that long at all. It's almost done. I encourage you to stretch or whatever. Um, okay, so what we've done here, oops, what we've done here is now created a directory called permdir, which has uh, 40 um, basically permuted uh, TMAPs. So what, what that means is that it's, it's taken the, the uh, dependent measure, it's reordered them completely randomly, and uh, calculated a TMAP like that. So this is a pretty garden variety permutation test. Um, and uh, the only thing being that 40 isn't really a very good number, but, you know, you get the idea. We can all type in 1,000. It's not that hard. Um, the next thing we can do is, uh, is convert this set of permutations into um, a permutation distribution of the, um, of the maximum T value in each voxel. Um, so for those of you who are familiar with how this is done in fMRI, this is exactly the same thing. It's the so-called maximum test. Um, and it's a useful test because it uh, does two things at once. It, it's, it, it sort of carries out the non-parametric non test, and it also uh, basically corrects for multiple comparisons because uh, by looking at the maximum value in each, in each volume and then looking at this distribution, here's the distribution that that command created, looking at this distribution of, uh, of maximum t values for each uh, permutation, um, you can uh, set a threshold by going somewhere along here and saying, okay, look, 4.00 was only exceeded in 4 out of 40 permutations. It was only exceeded 10% of the time. Um, so any, any, any voxel that exceeds 4.0 can be said to have a p-value of 0.1, if I did the math right. Um, so that's a pretty helpful step. And I'm just going to pretend that we had a, a larger permutation test and, uh, and um, you would get a, a sort of better indication of things here than you get from 40. But uh, um, actually, you can see that even with only 40 permutations, we, we actually came pretty close to the, um, to the threshold we got from the other method with uh, 0.05. It's 4.8, it was 4.6. Um, I can't swear that the, it'll always come that close. It seems actually kind of freakishly unlikely. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but it's a good demonstration if, it, if, it's, if it's really true. Usually, usually you would run more like 1,000 permutations. Um, and one -tailed or two -tailed th these are one-tailed. Um, so there, VBT map might have a flag for flag for two two tailed. Let me see if it does. Oh yeah. So there's a little flag for VBT map to say two tailed, um, if you, if that's what you want. And uh, make VLSM, uh, haha, does not have that same flag. It probably should. Um, so there, you can't run a permutation test if you want a two tailed test. Um, or if you do, you just email me and I say, ooh, how did I leave that out? And I fix it. Um, right. And you know, from there, it's, a, it's the same procedure. Then you, you go to your stat map, you threshold it, you look at it, you write an article about it. Um, so you know, that's two more commands and two more useful things that, uh, that you can do pretty easily. VBPermInfo is actually a, a kind of generally useful program look at the help for it. Again, the help screen goes over several pages because I tried to cram a lot of stuff in there. Um, but it has different options for, um, for how to calculate thresholds. Um, one of these creates a, a distribution of max cluster sizes, so you can carry out that kind of permutation. Um, there's another option, the dash u option, which is a little bit complicated, but it, what it basically does is carry it carries out a separate permutation test in each voxel. Um, so the idea is that you're, you're basically, you basically want a p-value at each voxel. And uh, this is useful if you, for example, want to uh, use a non-parametric test, of which the permutation test is, is a pretty good example, um, but you want to use FDR thresholding. So that would be the way to do that. And I, I, actually, I think I have that in my file here, so we can do that. Oh, right now. Huh. Um, so here's what that command looks like. Um, we pass it uh, a name for where we want, what we want the true um, TMAP to look like. 
uh, a the first few characters of uh, of all our permutations, which is permdir slash cube something, and then where we want the pmap to go. Um, now the pmap um, is uh, has the full resolution of our of our um, lesion files, and it has three sub volumes. Um, uh, I'm not gonna. So the first sub volume is, if I if I have this right, is uh, the p values because we call it the p map. We should put that up up front. The second value is um, is uh, the t values from your file, and the third value is uh, the z. Um, those t values can convert it to z, and it looks like something has gone wrong here actually. So uh, don't pay attention to that. I'll fix that bug shortly. Um, but the z values actually uh, um, are not well. We don't generally use them, um, which is I guess how this bug crept in. Um, but they are used in, uh, pretty often in MRI cron and the NPM. Um, so for for comparison to MRI cron, you would generally uh, be converting everything to z. I think it, it does it without asking you. Um, Dan, on your command line, where you put in the first um, part of the file name, you don't need a star there, the from here slash cube? No, no, because um, you're not, I don't, I don't want to get too deeply into how the shell works, but when you put a star there, it actually tries to, it, it actually tries to put those on, on your command line, um, which is not, the, the way the program works is, is it actually, it actually tries to expand it in the program. So there are a few ways to get at that behavior, and this is the one I chose. It's, it's maybe a little sloppy. Um, I think in this case you can actually just just give it the directory as long as there's nothing else in there. Let me yeah, see if I, I just want to go back to what you're aiming to do here. So you said in each box that you want to do permutation tests, <coughs> that's in place of getting it to the T. Right. Well, you get a T value in each box, or is that? Well, no, you're still getting a T value, but you're you're um, you're converting the t value into a into a p value using a non-parametric permutation mm -hmm. test okay. yeah um, so it's it's uh, you know in cases in any case where in a case where you would feel you that could, a, you could generate the p directly couldn't you if you, you just you have a difference yeah right? yeah you, yeah pretty much pretty much any score I, I think I think the t value tends tends to um, make things a little better conditioned but in this case it probably wouldn't make any difference um, so yeah um, However, the software routinely does, you know, that's what VBTMAP does. It creates T's, so, okay. yeah. Um, so we can use a separate program, VBFDR, which, which is, uh, is a program that's expert in un interpreting these PMAP files um, to see if uh, we've turned anything up at, uh, at a Q of 0 0.01. And it says no. And we can try 0 0.05. And I believe it's going to say no again. And then we can get really frustrated and say 0 0.15. Um, and it will actually turn something up. Um, so we can presume that this uh, this is not valid. But um, it basically shows you the uh, the um, FDR threshold um, for each of the stat maps that are in that file in order. So the first one's the T map usually, and the second one's, <coughs> one's the Z map. Um, and it also gives you at least one location where that where that value was actually found. Um, whether or not there are others is uh, is, is uh, remains to be seen. But if you set the threshold to this, you'll see them all show up. Um, and in fact, if you uh, if you want to see if you want to get some information about all the regions that have uh, that have this t value or higher, um, you could extract the t map from that file and uh, and look at it. So we can take VBIM p map dash include one. Include means just to. Just